and afterwards. So good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our MECA meeting for today, where we will be having uh, Matt from the Omni um, doing a presentation about the new venue that we're getting closer to campus, and we're so excited to have. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, outside of today's meeting, we do have that one coming up on March 31st, where we will be having Chris Young, um, protocol extraordinaire, come and do a protocol workshop. It'll be at the Student Pavilion. I have I can send you the registration link. Uh, it's on our Slack channel, and it was sent in an email last week. Um, but just you know, keep keep a lookout for that and come and join us. It'll be an all day event. Uh, the next one will be our Mecca Vendor Showcase, which is on May 18th um, at the Sun Devil Fitness Complex. So a little bit about today's meeting. We are recording, and so we'll be sent out afterwards for those who are unable to join. And uh, the slides and any information that Matt. Uh, gives us today will also be included in that email. So without further ado, Matt, I will stop sharing and I will let you take it away. Sounds good, Marissa. I appreciate it. Let me bring up my screen real quick here. All right. So hopefully you're all staring at this big, beautiful building. Uh, as Marissa said, my name is Matt Trush. I'm Director of Sales and Marketing here at the new Omni Hotel Tempe at ASU. Uh, we're excited to be opening here April 28th. So uh, just around the bend here, we only got a couple of weeks left, it feels like. Um, so in that crunch time right now. So uh, as I told Marissa earlier, my plan was to be upstairs and, and broadcasting live, but uh, I didn't want to be disturbed with all the, the construction progress that's going on. So we decided to take it back downstairs. So we are housed in the building right now. Um, we are actively getting all this uh, these products loaded in. In fact, we have 190 pallets of of OS and E, uh, we call it uh, basically all the, the, the supplies, all the furniture coming in the next few weeks. So um, definitely getting prepared to get ready to open. But we're excited to bring this opportunity, obviously, to the campus. We're, we're beyond elated to be able to host all of these wonderful events that you all plan and, and manage throughout the course of the year. Um, so what I'd like to start off with is kind of giving you a quick view. So we'll start with a video uh, showing you kind of a fly through of what the current progress of the property looks like and how it compares to the renderings. I will tell you the majority of our renderings are almost spot on to how the building is coming together. So um, what's exciting about that for us is it's almost a live representation uh, of, of what it looks like in our renderings and our renderings are, are amazing. In fact, the image you're looking at right now is a rendering of the building and how it's going to ultimately be when it when it's finished here on University and Mill. Um, and if you walk past it every day, it looks exactly like this, which I'm, I'm beyond impressed by. So uh, let's go forward here real quick and we'll take a look at this video. And then uh, I'll kind of walk through it a little bit with narration. I won't play the music with it because it gets to be a little redundant, but uh, we'll kind of move forward here. Let's see what we got. All right. So. Here we go. So as we mentioned, for those of you that are unaware that haven't traveled to the west side of, of ASU campus, we are located right on University and Mill. Uh, so it's directly across from the CVS. This fly through video should be able to give you kind of an idea of the location as you travel down Mill here right on the corner. Um, <clears throat> what's exciting about this for us is obviously the, the proximity to all of what's going on on campus, but also the proximity of everything that's happening on Mill Avenue. So um, really the, the best part about us for us is the, the views. So our building faces straight to the north with mo the majority of our guest rooms. So you're getting amazing views to the north and to the west, uh, looking up towards the mountains. Uh, this right here is a view of obviously the front entryway and the portico share, which will be directly off of mill. And then here you see the renderings coming through. So, um, what you'll notice from a, an entry point perspective is a very open space. So as you first come into this area, we tie in a lot of wonderful accents to the university. And you'll see that throughout my, my slide deck here in a minute. Um, great seating options. We want it to be a comfortable space where you come in and hang out, relax, get a chance to, to get to know each other, mingle a little bit. Um, the hotel is going to have a number of restaurants to be able to uh, experience. So this right here happens to be our uh, three mill restaurant, which is neighborhood services. And then as it flows through the video here, you'll see our ballroom space, which um, is re represented behind me on my backdrop as well. But uh, largest ballroom in Tempe, one of the largest ballrooms in the Phoenix market, it's going to be 15,000 square feet. We'll talk a little bit about this more in the future here as well. And then 
moving forward here, our Sun Devil Ballroom. So that view out the window actually has changed a little bit. We just installed three, I want to say almost 15 foot palm trees out there on that lawn. So there's now some palms that overlook it. Uh, there'll be a little, that area in the back, the metal sculpture is actually a bus depot. Uh, so we'll be able to have a great place for groups when they're coming and going. It's not a city bus depot, it's a group landing area uh, so that we can obviously stage for busing to get people to and from your location. Uh, guest rooms, obviously, with wonderful views and, and overlooking the space there. And <clears throat> ultimately, we'll talk a little bit about some of this design influence here in a minute. But these are the completed guest rooms as well. So what's wonderful is right now we are through the 13th floor as far as our guest room completion goes. So we're nearing the end of it. We only have 15 stories to get through. The same thing with the pool deck. So this was two months ago, but as of right now, the pool deck is almost completely finished as well. So um, <clears throat> excited to get this space set up and open because it's going to look amazing, especially for the summer. I can't wait to have guests going up there and being able to have a cocktail on the pool deck. And then the space everybody's been waiting for, this is Lucero. Uh, this is our 16th story restaurant space. Um, it's going to be a lounge in the indoor space and then there's a terrace seating spot on the outside. So great experiences. We want our guests to come in, obviously have a wonderful view of the city and really be able to take themselves kind of in a new, a new world, if you will, by leaving the normal hustle and bustle of this, of this market. So I'll let this video quickly play out here and then we'll start with the presentation on some of the individual accents of the building. I just didn't want to miss that shot because that's my favorite. So moving on here, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So looking at the lobby space, what we're, we're talking about in this space is really, uh, and some of the design influences here, as I mentioned, are really tying in the rich copper tones and, and bringing in a lot of sun contrast. So when we came through and designed this building, what was really behind the design concept was to make it have a, a very welcoming and inviting feel, but we wanted to also resemble the campus in some way, shape or form. So we tie in a lot of concrete. So the pillars that you see are actually exposed concrete facade behind the wooden lattice on the, the right side. Those are concrete walls that are directly behind it. So we want it to feel very similar to how ASU was constructed. Same thing with a lot of the tones and the woodwork that's throughout the building is to have a lot more of these elements that are they're tying into, you know, where we are here on campus. We want it to look and feel like you're at ASU. Uh, so when you see it, and as you're looking at this, this is the lobby facing towards the north. On the left-hand side, what you're looking at is uh, the entryway to uh, our, our lobby bar, which is going to be called Library Rules. So Library Rules in the morning is going to be a coffee bar with grab-and-go op options. In the afternoon, it converts over to a full-service wine bar where you'll be able to grab a cocktail or a glass of wine and hang out in the lobby and, and relax as you finish your day. Uh, directly to the right side where you see kind of that cage look, that is the entry point to neighborhood services. That'll be our three meal restaurant. That space itself is going to be pretty amazing. It's in a partnership with a chef out of Dallas where our, our corporate offices are located. And that's with uh, Nick Benavides. He's a, a world renowned chef. He has a number of locations in Dallas area and throughout the country now. Uh, and we've partnered with him on several of our properties. So we're excited to open this opportunity. It'll bring in a, an elevated American cuisine fair to, to this market. Not like there's not a number of those already, but I think that this might be a little bit of a different uh, influence with, with some really unique styles and options available for our guests that come in. There's going to be outside egress as well. So you'll be able to come right off of university, enter into the restaurant and be able to grab a, a, a wonderful meal. 20 local beers will be on tap. So great place to be able to see and experience what Arizona has to offer from an, uh, a libations perspective. Um, in addition to that, uh, as you look to the left there, there's a staircase. That is our staircase that takes you directly up to the second floor where all of our meeting space is. So what's exciting about this is you'll be able to get up to that meeting space and be able to work between the two floors you know, seamlessly without having to wait for elevators or or anything of, of that nature. And directly above that is actually a wonderful sculpture that's being created by an ASU alumni as well. So uh, we're excited to be able to feature a lot of art throughout the building that ties into the university or the landscape here as well. So um, here's some more design influence ideas. Yes, that giant basket chair will be in the lobby. Um, I don't know how it's going to fit in the lobby, but it's going to be in the lobby. I'm excited to see it when it gets finally placed in. It's going to be right as you walk through the main doors. 
Uh, but again, as you can see, the leather tones, the darker, richer tones, very warm and welcoming, which is kind of the mindset behind the design influence. And now this is that lobby space looking towards the south. And again, you see the bar space off to the right, that is library rules. My favorite thing in this space, if uh, you look at the far right side of the screen, are those basket chairs that are actually suspended from the ceiling. Um, there's a lot of communal table feel. Uh, so from a meeting perspective, we want this to really be a place where your clients, your attendees can gather and, and kind of relax and, and unwind and also get to know each other prior to a long experience. So um, moving forward here, this is that look and feel of neighborhood services. So this, I love the concept of this space. It really is to tie in to, and the, the design influence was tying into the canals and the ditches that were, were originally con, uh, constructed to be able to provide water to the Tempe market. So you see the baskets that were that are influenced in the lights, the ropes, the different things that were involved in, in the process of doing that. So we tied all of that in. What's really neat about those ropes that you see hanging from the ceiling is those actually are suspended and they actually end out with a light fixture that hangs over the tables, as you can see in the middle of the, the rendering here. So pretty impressive experience. I think it's going to be wonderful there. As you go out to the patio space, there is a patio that will be directly between us and Mirabella. That space is about 30 seats outdoor uh, covered area. It'll have cool misters and fans and everything to be able to provide uh, a, a wonderful experience for our guests when they're sitting outside. There's also a private dining space in here as well, uh, about eight to 10 people that's actually tucked behind that pillar uh, in the middle of the screen. Um, and that'll be an enclosed space that you'll be able to host uh, a small gathering or, or host a luncheon um, for a smaller group if needed. Again, these are those design influences for neighborhood services. Uh, just looking at some of what our designer was considering. From a guest room perspective, um, I like to think that our guest rooms are, are comfortable in the sense that they they invite you in, they welcome you in, they make you feel like you're at home. And that's really what we were trying to make this feel like for our guests when they come here. The design influence was uh, conceptualized after a uh, college professor's uh, condo or apartment, and they travel throughout the U.S. Uh, gathering different pieces of furniture as they continue their academia and, and their studies. And that's kind of the influence that goes through this room. So what you don't see in this image is on either end of the bed, the night, nightstands are actually separate or different styles as well as the lamps, uh, which is a very cool influence. Um, it's on trend, which is fantastic. Uh, it's a little different for those of you that are OCD looking for uniformity because you're not gonna find it there, but it's definitely an eclectic piece, which is kind of interesting and a fun talking point. You also have this wonderful seating experience in there for some relaxing and lounge seating. It's not just, I have to sit on my bed or I have to sit at the desk. We do offer the tables and the other chairs as well. And then in that uh, beverage hutch that's on the right-hand side, there's actually a mini fridge, just like a college fridge would have. Um, the drawer pulls on that look at and resemble like file cabinets as if it were a university feel. There's an ample workspace in the room as well with the desk and the light. Um, you'll see other wonderful accents as well. So that's kind of that design trend we came with. And then as you look at the carpet, what you'll see is uh, they wanted to pull in the feel of bike bikes and the influence of, of that mode of transportation throughout the university. So those are bike treads in the carpets. You'll see in the picture above the bed, it kind of looks like a little snippet of a bike tread that drove over uh, some paint. So kind of really cool little influences there to tie in. And then as you look out the window, wonderful views, right? So um, who doesn't love the sky in Arizona? And that's really what we wanna make sure our guests have a chance to look out those floor to ceiling windows and see. Um, from a bathroom perspective, not many people are interested in the bathroom, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. So we wanted to have cool tones. The mindset behind this was blue tones, tying in the, the skyscapes. We want you to come back and when you're in the bathroom or you're, you're getting ready, it has a calming effect. And I think this blue tone that we've put throughout our guest rooms really does that. Uh, our guest rooms have either walk-in showers or bathtubs, depending on the, the room preference. Uh, all of our rooms are either king or two queen beds, which is a wonderful offering as well. So ample space for our guests when they come to visit. Um, but it is, a, I, I love the colors. I love the look and feel of this. Uh, and for the ladies, there is a, you can't see it in this, but there's actually a corner foot uh, rest for uh, obviously shaving legs or whatever else that you need it for, but it's there. Um, so 330 guest rooms, as we mentioned, 157 are king beds, 162 are queen queens, 
We have 10 executive king suites that are all west and north facing on the northwest corner of the building. Uh, 10, uh, and then one presidential suite, and that presidential suite is up on the 15th floor. The 15th floor for us is also what we call our premier floor. Uh, so those will be higher ceilings, higher shower heads, and actually the king beds on that floor are all California kings, so slightly larger beds as well. So the whole mindset behind that is to give a much more luxurious experience. Uh, we conceptualize that in our other properties, um, Oklahoma City, for instance, which we recently opened. That also has a premier floor with larger uh, accommodations, and it was really design influenced to host NBA players and professional athletes that come to, to stay with us so that uh, they get a little bit more of a, a wonderful experience and not feeling like they have to duck down when they take a shower. Um, so it's a really cool experience from that perspective. Uh, we do have a state-of-the-art fitness center. It will have Peloton bikes and pre-core fitness equipment. There'll be some free weights and additional um, you know, treadmills, ellipticals, a stairmaster. It's going to have all the wonderful things uh, that we need to stay healthy. And then on every guest floor, you'll also find hydration stations. Those are going to be located directly outside of the elevator banks. Uh, you'll be able to fill your water bottle. So what's wonderful about this property is we are LEED certified silver. The mindset behind it is we will be fully sustainable in the future. Our plan is to make sure that we're getting away from uh, reducing our footprint from you know plastic waste um, really focusing heavily on, on sustainability and making sure that we're offering a product that speaks to the clientele that's coming to visit us. And I think the hydration stations are going to be a wonderful addition for us in this property. Um, meeting space. So as I mentioned on that first floor, we have one ballroom. It's our Sun Devil ballroom. What's wonderful for the university is this ballroom space is named after the university. It's also outside of this space dedicated to the university. So in partnership with ASU, we will have a rotating uh, experience where they own the cabinets and the presentation for the university um, right outside of the main doors to this room. So you'll be able to see different installations, whether it be something talking about you know past football accomplishments or uh, maybe it's something from a, a different portion of the university, whether it be engineering or you know journalism and different artifacts and different items that we can be able to showcase to our guests that come in so it's a wonderful way to tie in to our affiliation and our location uh, in addition to that this room is 2,000 square feet um, and it does flow directly out through the glass onto an event lawn the event lawn itself is 1700 square feet it is in the back of the building so what's nice about it is it's quiet uh, it does have direct views into towards Mirabella, so it's not like you're looking off into the distance. We are in the city, um, but as, as I mentioned earlier, we added some palm trees now, so uh, it'll be actually a pretty wonderful space to to get outside of your your normal meetings to be able to hold something, you know, outdoors here in in this wonderful weather. So uh, this is kind of the layout of that space. So as I mentioned, 2,000 square feet indoor space divisible into two se separate sections: Sun Devil One and Sun Devil Two and then the lawn space off the back, and then the pre-function space directly outside of it, that's another 800 square feet. Um, so not, not huge, huge events we're hosting in this space. This is really a great space for small luncheons, uh, some small gatherings, whether it be some classroom style meetings for you know, 50 or so people or 100 or so people. Um, that's really what this, this room is designed for. Upstairs on the second floor is our Salt River Ballroom. So this space itself, 15,000 square feet, which is massive, uh, 24 foot ceilings to the chandeliers. So really high ceilings. It feels large. It, it welcomes everyone that comes in with the warm tones that are in it. So you don't feel like you're in a big, massive, sterile ballroom. You are in a comfortable, very warm, very welcoming ballroom. So as you look at the walls, they are all wood panel. What's interesting and amazing about it is they've actually added some contour and texture into those wood panels with some bump outs in the walls where they have actually elevated and lifted the drywall out to be able to create different contour and texture. Uh, you see on the very ends, there's also some vinyl that's that's influenced to be able to give kind of a concrete look. Um, the doors are all going to be well lit on either side. You notice the lighting packages, there's up lighting, there's down lighting. Uh, the chandeliers, as you see, are actually, if you look at them in the room, there are those tubes as you see it, and they're actually suspended by leather straps. Um, so very, very cool and different look and feel. Uh, I truly think this is one of the most amazing ballrooms we have in our portfolio. Uh, I'd like to believe that, you know, even from a, an event perspective, it's going to offer 
a great space for large exhibits, but it's also a great space to host dinners, uh, luncheons, large gatherings for the university. So uh, to look at the space here, this is kind of how it breaks apart. So it is divisible into eight separate sections, Salt River 1 through Salt River 8. Uh, it can be quarter sections or the two end sections break into three, as you see on the diagram. Uh, in addition to the, the ballroom space, there are four separate standalone breakout rooms on the north face of the wall, which are amber, bronze, crimson, and terracotta. Those four rooms are roughly 800 to 900, um, 800 to 1,000 square feet. Uh, they kind of go down from amber being the largest to terracotta being the smallest. Uh, great space for breakouts. They're all hard walled. What's amazing about the amber room and the bronze room, for instance, is the, as you look north, they actually stare directly at the engineering building. Um, I have a lot of guests that have come through that point that out every single time, and, and I think it's a great, you know, nod to the university to be able to see it directly out our window. So hopefully nothing gets built in front of us. Uh, we'll see. Uh, aside from that, we also have the ASU boardroom. That boardroom on that bottom right corner is a space that has two-way communication between us and the university as well. So we are fully integrated to be able to co connect to the university's infrastructure. Uh, so in the event that there's a meeting or um, a board conference, something that has to be taking place, we can allow you to plug directly in and you'll be able to connect to your internet uh, or internet uh, to be able to communicate with your, your system back at, at ASU. So kind of a cool piece of functionality for us and obviously definitely showing our connection and affiliation with the university. Um, also on this space too, the, the Salt River Prefunction West is a great space to be able to do breakout um, for lunches or you know, cocktail reception. So just outside the rooms, the foyer space really does offer a lot of uh, ample space to be able to work with too. And here's kind of the look and feel of that uh, pre-function space. What's neat about it as well is all the design and art influence where you see all those chairs directly on that wall behind it where it looks like waves. Uh, that art installation is actually going to be books that are laid open and stacked. And from a distance, it looks like waves, but as you get closer, you will literally see the books stacked up. So it's a very cool art piece, uh, something something fun and neat to see. Everything, again, as we mentioned, will be curated and designed and, and brought in from local artists, uh, whether it be ASU alumni or Arizona-based artists. This space, as I mentioned, is Salt and Gila. We saw the, the video piece with it. Uh, great pool bar restaurant space. So this will be open most days, uh, probably 11 or 10 a.m. until 7 o'clock at night. A uh, great place for lunch or an afternoon dinner. Um, integrates out to the pool area. The pool deck is raised, as you can see it. What's wonderful about our pool experience for guests coming in is it will be cooled or chilled in the in the summer, and then we will be heated in the, in the winter months. So uh, anybody coming in who's ever jumped into a pool that doesn't have a chiller, you feel like you're in warm bath water, we will not have that problem here. Uh, it will definitely be a comfortable experience. And the pool is designed to be a lounge pool. So there's actually bump, in, bump outs with benches built into the pool. So you can sit in the pool and relax, have a cocktail um, and really have a great time. Directly off to the back, um, you also have a cabanas that are, have been um, placed into the space. So those cabanas are built in. Those will be available for rentals as well. There'll be plenty of shade on the pool deck. The pool deck is west facing, so it looks directly towards South Mountain. Uh, and then what's great about it is you have uh, fans, misters. It will be quite the spot to hang out at uh, on a typical summer day. Uh, definitely worth um, experiencing. And then this is really the, the most exciting piece, I think, aside from all of our wonderful meeting space from a restaurant perspective, Lucero. So Lucero means bright star. Our mindset and concept behind this is really to make it feel as if you are experiencing a cocktail event or a reception uh, underneath the stars. So we want you to come out and come up to the 16th floor, um, grab a cocktail and go sit out on the terrace. And on the terrace, there's six different um, banquettes of uh, fire tables. So you'll be able to have a cocktail and sit out at that table, uh, really enjoy the sky, enjoy the experience, see that sunset. Uh, you can also sit indoors. and have a wonderful gathering with friends and be able to, to enjoy cocktails and, and an elevated menu that will be available. Most of it will be tapas style, but we will have some, some chef curated items that are going to be on a rotation. Uh, so definitely some influence and some changing opportunities. So it's worth coming and checking out. There's also going to be live music from time to time. 
our mindset behind this space right now is to open it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, but have it available to meeting planners and event planners to be able to host clients up there for welcome receptions and other types of gatherings throughout the, the days that we are open. So that be, you know, being a Sunday through, um, you know, Thursday or Sunday through Wednesday experience. Uh, let's go here and awesome. So that kind of runs through the pictures of the building. I wanted to put this up on the screen so everybody gets a chance to see. We are finally loaded. I know there's been a lot of questions about it, but we are loaded on the ASU travel site now. That happened, I think, last week. Uh, so it is available for guests for transient travel. So if you are planning anything from a, a local or guest coming in or small people, small groups under 10 coming in, please use that as an opportunity. The rates are set up in there and they're designed to be uh, our lowest uh, transient rates that we can offer. Uh, in addition to that, if you do have group needs, obviously 10 or more rooms on peak can go to Dana Rowitz. Dana is our uh, sales administrative support specialist here. So Dana does a fantastic job. She's our ASU alumni, so she's my direct contact to the university. We're super ha uh, happy to have her on our team. Um, her email address is listed here, and I'll make sure everybody has that as well. And then if you send her leads, she will make sure she puts you in touch with the right person on our sales staff. In addition to that, um, you are welcome to follow us on all of our social media. So I encourage you to please uh, take a look at the, you know, take, take that QR code and click on that and please follow us because that we are posting a ton of updated photos and content there as well about the project. So it's great to be a part of it there. And I included my name as well as Ashley Paul Masano's name. So Ashley is our catering sales manager. So if you have an event that does not have any rooms associated with it, and it's simply just meeting space you're needing or a, a conference room, please let me know. And then I will make sure that, uh, you know, reach out to me, reach out to Ashley. I realize now I spelled Ashley's last name wrong. It's P-A-L-M-I-S-A-N-O, says A on there. I'll change that before I send it out to everyone. Um, but Ashley works well at getting all of those local catering events scheduled and put through our, our facility so you can obviously host here. So that really kind of runs me through everything with regards to the building. Um, I can do this real quick. Uh, let's do... I don't think, Marissa, I think that's good for me. If you want, we can we can start some Q&A and I'm happy to, I can either lead the slides on or for reference or we can pop them off. So let's, let's, let's pop them on. Up. I was okay. actually say leave them on because yeah, I already sure. have a question that was sent to me. Uh -huh. um, so nice. I know. <laughs> well, uh, excuse me, really quickly. This is Justin Lopez with Pinnacle Live here at uh, Omni Tempe ASU. I am, we are up in the uh, Lucero bar and we have some video image. You could probably put that on the screen. Uh, if you want, while Matt's taking some Q&A. It's just the uh, view from the rooftop bar. Oh, very cool. Thank you, Justin. So that's that's where I was supposed to be, Marissa, but obviously <laughs> that, didn't, okay. uh, that didn't play out. So let me, oh. let me bring up my screen real quick here. Yeah, because uh, the question is regarding um, what kind of mediation is included in the ballroom? Are there drop down screens? Or is there flown PA or ability to fly PA and screens? And who is the AV provider in the space? Well, you're in luck because Justin is on the call now. So uh, Justin can answer the questions about the, the uh, what is available from an AV perspective. Justin, do you, are you still available? Can you, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes, we got you. Wonderful. So, the to, to give a quick overview before we get to that point, there is nothing fixed or hard uh, mounted into the ballroom as far as anything um, regarding AV equipment. So everything is available through Pinnacle Live. So Justin is our, our on-site sales contact for Pinnacle Live and, and obviously one of our technicians. What's great about it is uh, we have rigging points. We have all the access points that you need to be able to bring in anything. Um, but Justin, can you speak a little bit to more to the, you know, capabilities that you'll have with regards to screens and, and backdrops and settings? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, with Pinnacle Live, we have, uh, you know, we are a new AV provider on, onto the market. So um, with that, we have purchased all brand new equipment. So we have 4K cameras, the latest, greatest Bluetooth uh, streaming audio, audio mixers, um, things that are not only very uh, event professional grade, but user friendly as well. So if you have some of those people 
who uh, are able to do just like a, a simple set on their own. We, we can facilitate that. As far as uh, backdrops and sets like that, we can facilitate pretty much whatever you want. We have uh, you know robust resources within the uh, area here, and we have a national team that we can pull to uh, pull from as well. So um, as far as capabilities, we do have rigging points. We actually have a rigging appointment at 11 that I got to go down to in a little bit, but um, the latest and greatest technology will be available at Pinnacle Live. Um, we have, you know, our, our standard screens that we'll have in inventory live here. We don't have to worry about anything getting pulled from, you know, our property to somewhere else. We only pull stuff in. So we're never going to be at a deficiency there. Um, and then we'll have, you know, probably some of the greatest technology you can find. And if we don't, we can actually source it at any point in time. Which is great. And I think what I will do too, Marissa, is I'll make sure that I include in the email that we send out the, the updated sheet as far as all of the pricing and what product we have available. If there's something that somebody has questions about that they're needing, I'll also include Justin's contact info so they can reach out directly to ask questions about uh, capabilities for other items that may not be listed. Yeah, there was two more questions that popped up and it says, can we bring in our own AV vendors? And um, do you rent equipment or run the AV? Yeah, so you can bring in your own AV vendors. I would discourage it because Justin's going to have some of the best equipment available, but I uh, totally get it. Um, if that's something that's needed, the only thing that we we re request is that we do have some contact with Justin and, and the team with Pinnacles because they will manage the facility here. So before we do anything as far as an install, we want to make sure that he's aware of what's being put into the space um, just so that we protect our own asset here and and make sure that the sound is properly um, set and that we don't have an experience also that doesn't meet the needs and the requirements. So any way that he can possibly help and supplement. So yes, to answer that question, we can bring in, we can allow guests to bring in their own AV. Um, we only ask that they work directly with our provider as well, whether it be for load-in purposes as well as for the actual setup of the event. And then what was the second part of the question? Do you rent equipment or run the AV? Uh, we do rent it, we do run it. Um, so Justin, I don't know how often we'll be actually renting equipment just for people to use. Most of it does typically come with our services to be able to manage, is that correct? Uh, uh, that is correct. I would just say probably, as I mentioned before, it would depend on the complexity. If it's a fairly simple event with, you know, just one or two mics and a, a single video switcher and one source, something that you know, you're experienced and confident enough in working, um, that's not a problem. But if you are getting into the more complex things, uh, we would definitely recommend uh, to have a technician there just for the integrity of the event to make sure everything goes off as flawlessly as possible. But uh, we, we can fac facilitate either depending on the complexity. Alrighty. Um, next question we got is about parking. Will there be parking for guests and the events attendees? If so, will it be free? So there will be parking. Um, the parking that we have designated for this building is actually in partnership with ASU. So we, the new garage that you see being built directly to the south of us uh, is actually going to be built with 280 stalls that are dedicated to the hotel. The hotel itself is valet parking only. So wh whatever we do will be uh, allowed through valet. Now guests could self park if they wanted to at the ASU lots that are there, they'll pay the day rates to be able to do so. Um, but most of our parking will be through valet. Now, valet right now is scheduled to be $39 overnight. However, for events, we've, we've reduced that price to $20 for event parking. Um, we have some flexibility in negotiating some of this along the way, depending on, you know, time of year and seasonality. I think a lot of it is, is difficult because we do work with a third party. So there'll be a, a valet company that manages a lot of that for us. And obviously our relationship with ASU, um, we are leasing those spaces at the garage. So um, as we continue to grow in our partnership, when we start talking about a lot of these larger events, a lot of it is going to be through discussions with ASU parking, uh, the city of Tempe, as well as uh, you know the police departments throughout the area here, both Tempe PD, as well as ASU PD to make sure that we have you know, the flow correctly figured out and we're able to block the roads correctly and obviously make sure we get everybody in and keep it comfortable for especially larger scale events. But um, most events for us are going to be valet only, parking our guests and then obviously uh, using the lot that's directly to the south of us. All right, next question was, is valet complimentary if you eat on site? 
It's a great question. So uh, that's actually something we're currently in discussion about. So for our guests, our local audience that comes in, uh, we have had that conversation about it um, potentially being complimentary or validated uh, if they eat up in Lucero. Um, we're still in discussion about it. I think the question is uh, obviously, what does that look like and how much volume is it? Um, so that'll probably be kind of something we roll out in the beginning and then decide uh, if we want to continue it as being complimentary for those outlets and then expanding from there. But I don't have a definitive answer on the future beyond how we open initially. So yes, I would say initially we'll have validation for our restaurants to allow our guests to come and experience it. All right. Um, anybody else have any questions? Yeah, if you want to uh, mute yourself or put them in the chat, I'm more than happy. Okay. Does the in-house sleeping room TV system have a private channel that events can customize with their own video or graphics? Yes, it does. So uh, the guest room TVs, I should go back here. So what's really neat about our guest room TVs is they, we do have Sonify. So we will actually have a dedicated channel, most likely set up for ASU to be able to promote on campus events. Um, obviously the university is large. So I'm working with a lot of different people right now to figure out how we facilitate that and who directly controls it. Once I have that information, um, that'll be something we do offer to planners from ASU uh, if they would like to showcase it. If it's an event that's held in house, our channel will indicate that there's meetings and events held on property. So someone could tune to those channels to be able to see what's being held in the facility. Um, what's also neat about our TVs is everything is Chromecast enabled. So you'll be able to stream your Netflix and everything else on those uh, televisions. So it's just as if you were at home. Um, so yes, lots of integration. There's also display boards throughout the hotel that will be digital display boards through four winds uh, that someone can walk up to. It'll show them what events are being held here. It'll also talk about campus events. And I've had some conversation there as well to be able to integrate that with the university. So if you are holding a campus event and guests are staying at the hotel, we may be able to figure out a way to educate them on where to go for that as well. All right, and it looks like a lot of people want to know um, how can they do an in-person tour um, yeah. at the Omni? Yeah, so uh, right now we are doing tours. I would, I would encourage you that if you have an event that you're truly sourcing right now and it, it needs to be determined and you're trying to move, make an action on it, I don't want to delay in any way, shape, or form. I want to make sure you have a chance to, to see it, vet it, and make sure it makes sense for your program. So calling us or scheduling that through myself or Dana or Ashley um, is probably going to be the ideal way to do it right now. Now, if it's something that's waiting and you're not necessarily pressing to move forward with, with anything, um, as I've talked to Marissa and Melissa, I think the plan for me is to be able to have a cocktail mixer with all members of, of Mecca to be able to have a, an experience in the hotel. So walk through the, the building, see all of the different properties of the building as they're completed. This will be after we open. Um, I've been discouraged and, and told not to use the weeks surrounding graduation, so <laughs> we'll have to figure that out. Um, but have you all come over and take a look at the space, see the space, and then host uh, maybe a beverage mix or something uh, to, to obviously get to know you all a little bit better um, and answer questions as to the property and what we can do for the future. So uh, more to come on that. I have a feeling that'll be something we roll out here and I'll send an email with an invite uh, as soon as we determine which date and time works best. But if there's something pressing, I please, 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 please contact myself or Dana um, and let us know what, you know, what you're needing. And we can, we're happy to schedule a, a tour to come through. Site tours take approximately, you know, an hour to 30 minutes to an hour, depending on what we need to see within the building and what questions they have. Okay. Uh, one question that did pop up that is very important that we need to address is, when reserving any the spaces, whether that's a conference uh, room or the hotel rooms, do we have to use, do we go through Anthony Travel to um, work out those details and they can sign the contract or do, or Matt, do you know if we work or can we sign that contract? Do you know by any chance that we talk to contracts? So the, depends. So. I've been instructed from your representation through Anthony Travel that all things through the university must go through Anthony Travel. Um, yes. So that's what I've been told. As far as 
contracting catering programs. So non programs without if if those programs have room commitments, they Anthony travel would like to have them go through them for their purposes and of negotiating and making sure it's on a standardized template, which I'm fine with. If it is a catering program, meaning you just you just need meeting space, those do not have to go through Anthony travel. Those would come directly through the property. So and you're welcome to reach out. So if you're hosting a, uh, a luncheon and there's no guest rooms associated with it, or there's a couple guest rooms that you could book through the travel portal itself, then you would reach out to us directly and we would negotiate and, and talk through the process for what the pricing would be for a, a luncheon or a dinner event, whatever it might be. But if it's guest room related, Anthony Travel has advised that they'd like to be involved in those processes. And I will also double check with Anthony Travel just to make sure everybody's on the same page because we had a the last Mecca meeting, Matt, was about uh, who can sign and what you can sign and what you're not allowed <laughs> to sign. So right. I believe I, I, everybody's a little bit cautious right now. So um, uh, next question was, will ASU have a discount for renting out the meeting spaces? So I, I try to offer the best pricing possible when it comes to obviously our partners that use us very frequently. So I don't have, I can't specifically say that I have a fixed percentage of discount because every meeting is completely different depending on how it sits within our schedule and our availability, uh, time of year and seasonality. So um, what I will tell you is that everyone on my team is, is an advocate for the university. We're an advocate for our partnership. So we're going to do our best to present the best pricing option with the most inclusive offerings that we possibly can. Um, now, obviously, if something isn't isn't getting to that dollar amount, there's reasons why. Um, I, I, I'm in a constant discussion with clientele right now about how does it work with you know our price points and your food and beverage costs. And the biggest concern we have currently is the the nature of the market with inflation. Our prices have gone up considerably but a lot of our meeting planners prices have not gone up from a budget perspective. So um, it's, it's an, a game we have to play. It's a conversation that has to be had. So uh, I just encourage you to, to keep an open dialogue. Um, don't get discouraged when you get a, a, your first price offering and it, it's not exactly where you want it to be. It's a conversation that has to be had. And, and I tell my staff to please make sure that you're reaching out and having conversations with our clients before we you know, before we have them turn away and not not consider us. If it's a hard and fast, this is the only offer we can make, then then unfortunately that might be the case. But a lot of the times we're willing to work with you to figure out what the best approach is going to be to get your program in our building. Okay, and then a next one about rates is, will there be rate discounts for ASU employees, um, either for, lo for lodging or securing a buyout? Yeah, so... This the the ASU travel site has probably the best is the best is the best resource for everyone to be able to book rooms for for what we call transient travel. So if someone is coming into the university, you can click directly on that link that says book your preferred or ASU rate. It's great because in our partnership and agreement with with Anthony Travel, who manages this, we've waived the destination fees for the property. So it includes all of the amenities you see, plus Wi-Fi and everything else. Um, and the rate is the lowest rate that we will have for any of our business transient guests that are coming to the property. So um, it's a great channel to be able to make a quick reservation. Now, if you have a group of ASU associates or, or alumni that are coming or any type of guests that might be attending, um, and it's a larger group than more than 10 rooms, that's where I encourage you to reach out to myself or Dana, because while we have transient rates that are our lowest transient offerings, we can sometimes do better based on volume pricing. So if there's a group, we can we can offer you a group rate uh, that is going to be a lower rate potentially over those dates than what your transient rate might be. Okay. And one question that was sent to me was, is there an official hotel opening that AAC will be invited to? Oh, so like an opening event. Yes. Um, so <clears throat> what I'm working on right now, uh, we are we have a ribbon cutting event that we're planning that will be specifically to the stakeholders involved in the event. Um, so that's a uh, more of a private experience. We are planning an event in the afternoon on the 27th. Um, and I will I will be sending out some invites for that. Uh, that's going to be an event from um, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. on the 27th. That'll be more of an open house. We're calling it a reveal. Um, so we will be allowing guests potentially to come through, experience the property. It'll be an invite only, so it's not going to be open to the general public yet, but 
because we'll open the very next day. But that will be an opportunity that we can give some notice on. Uh, and we're just in the process of finalizing that now. So, um, Marissa, I'm happy to send you that information and we can obviously uh, send it out to members of the team that might be interested in uh, attending. And then we can okay. collect those names and okay. I'm happy to to add them to that list. Perfect. And then when you say the 27th, I'm assuming you mean April? April? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. I okay. always say the 27th because in my head, I constantly am saying the 27th, 28th. So that's the only dates that matter to me. But it's always in April. It's not any other month. But I forget that I, I don't say the month. So thank you for reminding me. And then I did get a random question, which I, I think is um, really funny. Um, yeah. as, a, um, as an Omni Club member, will they be delivering coffee to the rooms? It's my favorite thing about staying at the Omni. Oh, I, I love a good Omni guest. And I love that question. So uh, yes, if you're an Omni Select guest member and you have uh, been a frequent Omni guest of our property. So if you're a gold guest, Omni Select Gold gets you basically to stay a couple of times, one, two, three times. You can sign up for this program. And what happens with our Omni Select guest uh, program is we have door hangers that you complete uh, for anybody that comes to stay. So I encourage you to sign up for the program, even if you're not planning on staying anytime soon, but you do have an opportunity to stay. Uh, you get these door hangers. And upon check-in, you, you fill out the information. And then when you come to our property, after you, you, know, you fill out the information you set on the door, the next morning, our staff comes around and we deliver coffee to your room or whatever beverage preference you have based on what you selected. So um, it is probably one of the most coveted experiences of any of our, our guest program items. Uh, those that stay with Omni love it. They absolutely adore the fact that they can wake up in the morning, open their door, and there's a pot of coffee waiting for them. Um, even There's even options to add some, some snack items as well, like a croissant or something like that. So um, very, very, very cool experience. There's other benefits as well, as you earn free night stays, depending on the number of redemptions. And I will also say that ASU is affiliated with our property, as well as our property in Los Angeles. So if you have anybody that's traveling between the satellite campus and here, we do have that affiliation also. So, and it does have a rate program there. So if you look in that same travel site for the university, there are rates available at our Omni LA property, uh, which offers a similar benefit package. All righty, any, any last minute questions anybody wants to add? Um, Otherwise, uh, thank you, Matt, for yeah. uh, your time today. And thank you to everybody who was able to join this meeting. We will, like I said, be sending out the recording. And Matt, once you update some of those slides a little bit with some more additional information, uh, we will go ahead and send those out as well. So with that, I uh, thank you, everybody, and have a great Thursday. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you.